And if that is not the case, on the one side you are telling third world countries, a country like Pakistan who has contributed since they want to do more. Why a double standards for other countries? Now Pakistan has decided and it's a message right from here. That what we want here do more. No, the, the world has to do more. The world has to do more. In the name of the most merciful and beneficent, respectable member of the parliament, both from the United Kingdom and European Union, Elected reps, councillors, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and may the blessing of the divine power be upon all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honoured and grateful to be honest. I am excited and humbled to the core as well. What I am witnessing of late, I arrived in Europe on the 16th of this month. And the sole objective of this visit is only Kashmir. I landed in Germany and what I witnessed in Germany, the sort of passion and commitment of all the key stakeholders then from there to Italy and on the 24th when I arrived here and what I'm witnessing even now is not less than a miracle. Hats off to this country, to its values, norms, traditions and above all to the system which has given respect to humanity and as a Pakistani, my Prime Minister in every single event quote all those achievements which your country has achieved over the period of time and I as a student of international politics I have studied your history starting it from glorious revolution of 1688 I try to follow and try to do the needful when it comes to best practices and the classic example which I get in today's human history is none other than your country. We value your contribution. And prior to what I am here for, I am bound to give you my personal introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk of the south of Khabar Pakhtunfa, the south of Pakistan. <clears throat> general norm and general approach and misperception of late has gone from bad to worse when it comes to Pakistan and where I come from. Ladies and gentlemen, for my upbringing, that church, missionary school, father, nuns are equally responsible just like my parents. I studied from a missionary school. My forefathers allowed our Christian brothers and sisters, whether Catholic or Protestant, to become a part of that district where I come from. And they were allowed to become a part of that culture and system in 1940s and 50s. Ladies and gentlemen, that church whether it has any relation with Church of London or with Church of Rome has played a significant role in realizing us that what humanity means when it comes to Christianity. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said that since Christianity and that missionary school and church has played a significant role for all of us and for my whatever I am today, 
And the very next step which I would like to share and would like to draw your attention to that apart from what, where I come from, I remember that when I was, I served as a managing director for Bava in Germany. And when I applied for a visa, they wrote E1 on my passport. E1 means enemy number one because where I come from, south of Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, North Waziristan, South Waziristan, or the Agency, all the tribal areas mostly come from that part of Pakistan. I was shocked, I was devastated. But my motherland and my forefather and my values has taught me one thing. That never ever surrender, become a global responsible human, initiate logical approach and remain humble. Nothing on earth will ever stop you from achieving your desired objectives and then that became a reality and then I lived in Germany and then one single telephone call changed my life. When I heard that three family members of my life were slaughtered and killed. I had no other option. I am a father of three angels and a son. I had no other option. Except from one to go back and contribute. So ladies and gentlemen, that is one aspect of my personality and where I come from. The second thing which I would like to convey to you that since misperception is the order of the day and they say perception is stronger than reality, that part of the world played a pivotal role during Cold War. We sacrificed everything. Every household is affected one way or the other. We lost our loved ones. Our contribution is enormous. But what we hear every second day mm -hmm. that you are terrorist, you are extremist, you are the one, and we are even can, can, we are even portrayed as a scar on the face of humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are witnessing, and this is what we are facing. And this is what we are trying since that day to convey to the global community, to all those who have witnessed, who better can understand the importance of peace than Europe. You were at a threat of storm. Germany, France, Great Britain. Let me take you back when church and monarchy were at a threat of storm. Then, in the name of sex, in the name of religion, in the name of power, in the name of wealth, in the name of values, norm, culture, humanity was butchered and this Europe became an area, a region which was quoted by the rest of the world. <laughs> Having said all this, ladies and gentlemen, why I am taking maximum time, I would like to convey the true picture. It's not about Kashmir. It's about humanity. It's not about Islam. It's not about anything which Pakistan has to do. And one, let me tell you one thing more. As a Muslim, those who believe in the divine power and the holy prophet, for them, if they are able to believe in Jesus, Mary, Bible, Torah, Moses, none of them is a Muslim. We respect and value humanity to the core. Bible, Torah, every holy book, Christianity, Judaism, you name any religion, whether Sikhism or Hinduism, 
Every religion talk of humanity. Hindus, holy book is Veda. Veda talks about humanity. Sikh, holy book is Granth. Granth talk about humanity. Christianity, they quote Bible and all those testaments, old or new, that talks about humanity. You name any religion on the face of the earth, it only and only talks about humanity. And then when we go through human history, League of Nations, what went wrong? What exactly went wrong in Versailles Treaty? What made Germany realize that now when Rhineland was taken away from them, that Germany had no other option because they said power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Then the world witnessed the scenes which were barbaric to the core. Humanity pleaded. So ladies and gentlemen, what we hear today, clash of civilization. What we hear today, that humanity has been polarized to the core. This is what we are leaving for our coming generations. This is what we are up for. Are we willing to leave the world and this entire globe for those who will divide us? Who will polarize us? Then they will bully us. And then humanity at the end in itself will become something which will not be cherished in any way. So ladies and gentlemen, having said all this, now I will come because I am knocking at the door of those who have witnessed everything. You have your history speaks in high volumes for your commitment and passion. We are knocking at your door because we are giving examples of peace and harmony of yours. European Union and above all the sort of respect which you have given to Pakistanis and Kashmiris and people from across the globe in your country you treat them equally everyone can live according to their own will and wish that is your hallmark and now when my Prime Minister and our team after 72 years for 23 years, when the whole world used to laugh at my chairman and my prime minister, and the world used to make fun of us. And as I earlier mentioned that what we have learned and what we are taught is not to surrender. Go to the last edge. Never ever give up. And always believe in yourself. That what Nelson Mandela's also that what Mother Teresa taught all of us. And today, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk of United Nations Human Rights Charter, on the one side, you are telling us that Millennium Development Goals needs to be made the order of the day. And then you come up with another initiative that 17 point agenda, sustainable development goals needs to be given due importance. Then you come and say that women rights, women empowerment, education for all, mother and child care, the list is at this. I, it gives me immense satisfaction and contentness because it's all related to humanity. But when we see what the way humanity has been treated of late and the way the developed world, the prosperous world, those who have witnessed the same for centuries, their silence at this particular juncture is raising many questions, ladies and gentlemen. Today, let me give you an example. Ten, more than 10,000 daughters and sisters of ours have been raped in the last 
few months. My innocent children, they don't shoot them. They have got swords and braggers, they cut their throats. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing more, forceful conversion, whether you are a Christian or a Muslim, this RSS fascist Modi has crossed all limits. We respect India. We respect the people of India. We don't want war. The world has to now realize, and especially the parliamentarians and the key stakeholders of this country. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why are we not going and giving due importance for war? It might offend all of you. It is very much visible on the faces. Because if we include Russia, South Asia, the entire regions mean 50% of the world, half of the world population live in that region. And countries, those who are at the greatest storm, Pakistan, India, China, India, and then if we include Russia, any untoward incident will be a total war. And when we, have, we talk of total war, when you have got mutual assured destruction, nuclear deterrence, within 14 days, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, within 14 days, anyone sitting in Montreal, in New York, in Washington, in London, in Berlin, in any part of the world, he or she will not live a normal life. The message to all of you is if we remain silent, if we become spectators, then what will happen? Just recently, Syrians, refugees, hats off to your commitment with humanity. Only Europe came to their rescue. Pope came to their rescue. We value that. One child. A baby girl was lying dead on the beach. The world woke up from the slumber. And now Brexit, US vis-a-vis -vis Mexico, illegal immigrants, one single ship lands on any on the border of or on the beach of any country. Their political dynamics immediately changes. And another example I am giving you of Pakistan. 2611 kilometers water with Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, still at this moment, the largest number of refugees are being taken care by whom? Let me give you figures. Pakistan, at this particular juncture, has got 2.8 million refugees, Afghan refugees, 1 million Bihari refugees, 1 million Bengali refugees, it means 4.8 million. And in spite of that, we are going through a lean phase and patch. We are witnessing the worst ever economic crisis in the history of Pakistan. But we never close the door. Because humanity is above everything for us. When we talk of refugees, illegal immigrants, let me give you an example. There are total 7 crore, how million? 7 million. 7.25 million. Billion. 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 70.25 million refugees from UN, according to UN, UNHCR. Out of 
70.25 million refugees across the globe. 85% refugees are being taken care of by the third world countries. <laughs> Pakistan is in the front. And let me tell you, those who misperceive Pakistan, it's a message loud and clear to them. I'm not giving any statistics of my own or of my country. I'm giving you UNHCR and now I'm going to quote UNODC. United Nations Crime Control. Drugs Control. You may distract or own please. You need to see the message to all of you is 85% of drugs, all sorts of, all sorts of drugs are being, uh, are, man, are being manufactured in Afghanistan. 50% of those drugs which is managed, which is haunting our youth and our coming generation, 50% of that enter Pakistan. And ladies and gentlemen, now, since 2001, Pakistan is a OP free country, one. Highest number of Caesar in the entire globe is Pakistan, third. 97% prosecution rate. We don't compromise whether somebody is a minister, prime minister. Financial task force. The developed world came and said that we need to do more than what we hear every day. And we are, because as a responsible state, we are bound to do the needful. The world has forgotten our contribution. When in 1979, when Afghanistan was invaded, we, the people where I come from and my country was called as champion of humanity. Heroes, a lot of praises and compliments were given to us. And today, without any rhyme and reason, when I have lost more than 70,000 of my own people, when I am butchered, killed in the name of sect and religion, when my children, more than 200 children were slaughtered in school. When we talk of Vatican, or let me give you an example of Church of London, how many bishops you have in House of Commons, you are giving maximum funds to Church of London. Nobody has the right to challenge your decisions. But when I provide the same to my people, to children, those who study in those schools, unfortunately that word madrasa, which means school, has been given a different yes. perception. And we decided that no. We will provide state-of-the-art education Anyone who studies from that school, religious school, will be given an education where in every language that student will stand among the competitors, whether he is studying in Europe, in Germany, in Far East, Middle East, in their own language, he will be able to convey to the whole globe that Islam is a religion of peace and harmony. We have nothing to do. Due to poverty, unemployment, 
able to live a normal life, you will be made responsible. Quran says and quote. How can we we wage three wars? Yes, we wage three wars with India. Why? Why Indians are not allowing UN envoys, international media to visit Indian occupied Kashmir? Why we Pakistanis have initiated new visa policy where we have allowed open our doors. We are allowing every country, every citizen of the globe, online 175 countries, for, on arrival 50 countries, from 66 to 98 business visas. We are allowing, we have opened cantonments except from key installations, 5 km dia. The rest of the entire Pakistan, including Azad Kashmir, is open. Come see it with your own eyes. Experience in the rest of the people. Decide, ladies and gentlemen. Having said all this, now I'll give you an example of India. India is the more is the largest democratic country, biggest demo democracy in the world. Number two, the second largest market in Holland, Leiden, in one of the events where I was invited, I said that then if a country which has the second largest market or the largest market in the world, if they are allowed to bully humanity, then it means UN more or less is doing the same what the League of Nations was doing. And if that is not the case, on the one side you are telling third world countries, a country like Pakistan who is contributing since they want to do more. Why double standards for other countries? Now Pakistan has decided and it's a message right from here that want, we want here do more. Now the, the world has to do more. The world has to do more. The world has to, through best practices, through ethical approach, has to convince one and all the way I have been praising your country, the way you have given respect to my people. We want the same at the international level too. Indians, Modi, prior to when he became the Prime Minister for the first time, he was declared persona non grata, he was not even allowed to enter the US. He was on that list. What he did in Gujarat, Ahmedabad, he butchered people. The world <coughs> And the consequence of that, Allah, as any key celebrity of India who is a Muslim, those who are from performing arts, the social media, through social media I am challenging Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, all those who have anything to do with India, but they are celebrities and from performing arts, can they swear upon their children that they are not being bullied and humiliated? They are not even allowed to buy apartments in Mumbai. Why? Because that extremist RSS approach, fascist approach, is that Hindu Atva, as I said, Veda doesn't encourage Hindus to bully humanity. But RSS approaches, Modi approaches, that since Muslims rule India, for four, more than 400 years, these Hindus, th those Hindus were forcefully converted by Muslims. Now, either need to be for forcefully converted Hindus or they will they, be asked to leave India. What a joke. Is this the way you run the affairs? Another thing, those Kashmiris who are living Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you figures because history without mission plan took place. Prime Minister Imran Khan 
has been raising it at all levels. The then father of the nation, Kajaz Muhammad Ali Jinnah, when decided that we need to have a separate state, 55% to 58% Muslims preferred to stay. Preferred to stay in in India. And Maulana Azad and all the Muslim scholars and leaders, political leaders, were of the opinion that Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah betrayed the Muslims of India. And now, after 72 years, majority, 100% across the board consensus among Indian Muslims in India that Qaid Azam was right and we were wrong. Because Easter, Christmas. Christmas and Easter is the name of passion, commitment to humanity, love, affection. Just like ours, Eid al Fitr, after fasting and then Eid al Azha. Anyone who wants to follow the teachings of Islam in the recent Eid al Azha, they are not allowed. They can't. Buy, sell, or eat beef or meat. People and children and students and young boys and girls, they were killed in the streets. <coughs> is this what incredible India is all about? And then, ladies and gentlemen, when we ask India to come and let's discuss, because we keep on telling to the whole world. That is a bilateral issue we will share and discuss. Neither they are willing to play with Pakistan. They have got a best, better cricket team. <laughs> what keeps them away, I fail to understand. They are neither willing to play cricket with us, neither willing to talk to us, neither willing to a civilized approaches that if you have any misunderstanding or difference, table, talk, and then Interaction at all levels will do the need Conservative, orthodox, fascist to the core, Modi and his entire team. Now it's a message to Modi from him. And to all those my brothers and sisters who are not here to hear what I just mentioned that Pakistan don't need or don't want war. Pakistan will never become an aggressor. That India, what India is trying for. They have suffocated the lives of Muslims in India and then they blame Pakistan for any subversive activity. This time around we have decided that if India draws, crosses that red line, the red line means if if they cross and touch the people of Azad Kashmir, and I believe, and this is what my belief, and we are willing to sacrifice our own daughters and sons for the future and for the prosperity and peace of occupied Kashmir. <laughs>
They need to be given that responsibility. Conduct blood And you will see it with your own eyes that what they want. Pakistan rule is at this juncture that we will never tolerate anything which can now harm Kashmiris at any level. My Prime Minister has recently conveyed a message. And Moody and his team usually talk of one thing that Pakistan will be given a lesson. <laughs> Have you ever heard the life of the family of Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him? Please, I would request the parliamentarians kindly go through that. When Nelson Mandela was behind the bars, he was there for about two to three years and then he said, I will surrender. I can't live this sort of life. And then he interacted with one Muslim and he gave him a book. And that book was all about the life and the miseries of the Holy Prophet family members. And then he remained behind the bars for 27 years. But in the end, he turned the table upside down for those who decided their own rights. Every Muslim, every Muslim, just like your soldier, your security, your all those who in any manner during war and peace, when they sacrifice their future for your, when they sacrifice their life for your future. You value them. So the message to Moody is that every Muslim wants to live the life of Hazrat Imam Hussain. In the name of humanity and in the name of deprived ones, we can sacrifice our own loved ones. Never challenge us. Never challenge us because it will be the end for God forbid, God forbid, God forbid for the entire world. Now humanity is pleading and who has to play a pivotal role and due role to play whether fortunately or unfortunately again the developed world. Please come out, prove it, you have already, we owe a lot to you when in the name of freedom of expression, when those cartoons and different things were associated with my holy prophet. London and the people of United Kingdom came out on the streets, irrespective of who they are, they respect, supported and given respect to humanity. We, I beg you in the name of humanity. As a father, I beg you. I, as a human, I'm begging you. What we are witnessing, and our life is 24 7 at stake. You don't know what we are going through. But let me assure you. Pakistan will never compromise in the name of humanity. Pakistan will stand firm, committed with anything which they have committed. But when it comes to Kashmir, occupied Kashmir, please remember my words. Don't say that, God forbid, God forbid, that I, we wish we could have done that. Then there will be no ifs and buts. <laughs> Let's save the bell is ringing, calling us to the bright future. So let's join in tonight together and prove it to our coming generations that we are civilized humans. We will never polarize humanity and we will live with peace and harmony. Long live humanity. Long live United Kingdom. Long live the people of Indian occupied Kashmir. Long live the people of Azad Kashmir. Long live Pakistan. May Allah bless you all. Thank you.